Because, of course, you know I believe this, but I would like to persuade all of you that this is by far the greatest challenge that fits in the category of biggest challenges we face, but also in the category of 2030 is now, because the decisions that we make today uh, are going to shape 2030. Uh, a lot of people look at the climate crisis and they think solely about air temperature, but you don't know. It's a large complex system, the Earth's climate system, with a lot of inertia. Uh, and it's like that old uh, corny cliche metaphor about turning the wheel of a, an ocean liner and it takes a long time before the direction changes. The Earth's climate system is kind of like that. And we have been turning toward heat, heat, heat for quite a long time now. Uh, last year was the hottest year in the, in the recorded uh, history of North America, of course that's only part of the Earth's content, but 12 uh, of the, the 12 hottest years ever measured globally have been in the last 15 years. Last month, August 2013, was the 342nd month in a row where the temperatures were hotter than the 20th century average. Uh, this past decade was by far the hottest decade ever measured. Now, they've only been measuring with instruments for 140 years or so, uh, but that's a long period of time. And of course, they have proxy measures going back much farther than that. But we're seeing the manifestations all over the world. There has been a 100-fold increase in the extremely hot days uh, occurring around the Earth. They used to cover 0.1% of the Earth's surface, now 10% of the Earth's surface. And we're seeing the extreme uh, weather events that are associated with the climate crisis. Uh, and look at what uh, Boulder, Colorado's just been going through. I, I live in Nashville. Three years ago, we had a similar event. There are thousands of my neighbors lost their homes and businesses, and none of them had flood insurance because there had never been a flood in those areas. It was described as a once in a thousand year event. Uh, and it's uh, an even rarer event that happened last week and two weeks ago in, in, in Boulder. Uh, and, of course, the fires uh, all across the West and the melting ice. And uh, New York City, hello, uh, Superstorm Sandy, uh, on October 29th of last year, uh, parts of the ocean directly east of where we are right now were 9 degrees Fahrenheit above normal. That's the energy that makes the winds and the storms stronger. Uh, and when the land-based ice melts, of course, sea level goes up, and so the storm surges go further in, uh, inland. And of course, the evaporation of moisture off the oceans puts a lot more water vapor in the sky. Uh, and it, it comes back down in the normal water cycle. It, it, uh, and, and so we're seeing these extreme downpours, uh, record floods, uh, much more precipitation in a short period of time, uh, and, and this is happening uh, all over the world. Uh, and, and so Mother Nature is speaking up loudly and clearly. Uh, later this week, the scientific community will speak again with their the fifth assessment of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and uh, predictably, the denialists will be out trying to sees on this, that, or the other, and make some exaggerated uh, false claim. Will the world be played for a fool again? I don't think so. I think that we are right at uh, a political tipping point. Because people are hearing from their parents and grandparents and elders that it's never been like this before. Uh, this is, uh, th these are new weather and climate conditions. Uh, last year was the record uh, melting of the Arctic ice cap. That affects weather patterns as well. Uh, and the number of people in harm's way uh, are, is a number that is certainly uh, increasing. Now, we are still putting 90 million tons of global warming pollution into the atmosphere uh, every 24 hours. Uh, and according to uh, Jim Hansen and his colleagues and what has been described as a conservative estimate, the accumulated amount of man-made global warming pollution that's up there in the atmosphere traffic heat now 
perhaps as much heat each day as would be released by 400,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs going off every day. Now, it's a big planet, but that's a lot of energy, uh, and that's what's evaporating the uh, water off the oceans into the air in greater volumes. That's what's making the air warmer, so it holds more water vapor, so the water cycle is disrupted. That's what's raising not just the air temperature again, but the ocean temperature. And it's also putting uh, uh, carbon in, carbon dioxide into the oceans itself, acidifying <laughs> the oceans. At the, the Climate Reality Project, our job is to tell this story and to tell the uh, increasingly hopeful story about the solutions. We're seeing renewable energy from solar and wind, for example, deployed at rates that are way, way, way beyond what had been predicted. And the cost is coming down uh, to levels below the grid average price of electricity in more and more sectors of the world. And in the next few years, uh, the, 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 the number of people who live in those sectors of the world uh, will grow from billions uh, into the vast majority of the people in the world. Uh, in, and today's 18-year-olds are waiting and hoping and are eager for this generation with its hands on the controls and levers and fingers on the buttons of change in this world to take action and take on this crisis. Put a price on carbon. Put a price on denial. Let's solve the, the climate.